AMD recently posted on its community blog that, quote, operating at up to 110 degrees Celsius junction temperature during typical gaming usage is expected and within spec. We detailed the new junction temperature exposure way back when the Radeon 7 launched in February, but with the wider interest in 5700 series cards combined with the short-term memory of the internet, this topic is now being revived with new fervor. Today we're highlighting how AMD is inadvertently whitewashing its partner designs, how the community has become confused into believing things that aren't really true, and about how AMD GPU junction temperatures actually work. Again, for the third time. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermaltake C360 DDC Hard Tubing Water Cooling Kit. If you're ready to dip your toes into the water and build your first open loop cooling system, the Thermaltake C360 DDC Hard Tubing Kit comes with all of the components you need. The kit includes a 360mm radiator, three 120 ARGB fans, a copper W4 ARGB water block for the CPU, a pump and res DDC combo, and all the fittings needed to build a full CPU open loop. Learn more at the link in the description below. We've broken this down to be as compact as possible, so this is becoming a, a topic again because of AMD's new blog post, which is presumably a response or a kind of a, a defensive reaction to discussion online about thermals for the Navi series cards. So we're breaking this down into four primary problems. One, AMD's quote sounds defensive and minimizes the impact of coolers on the GPU. Again, it says operating at up to 110 degrees Celsius junction temperature during typical gaming usage is expected and within spec. This is interesting because on one side it's actually wrong. AMD has perhaps inadvertently created a controversy that didn't exist or need to exist to the degree that it now does. So it's wrong because in our testing, even the reference card design wasn't hitting 110 degrees junction temperature, especially not in gaming. Uh, so when left to auto settings, it does if you go to 40 dBA noise normalized, you drop the fan speed to get it quieter, and then you run it. But under auto conditions, we saw the card maxing out at just under 100 degrees for Furmark. So it's feasible with a bad case with high ambient temperature or by tweaking the fan speed that you could, yes, run at 110 junction. Of course, there's a lot of bad cases out there, so that's possible. But using Furmark is also far more abusive than most games. So it's possible to hit 110, but it shouldn't be considered expected. That's something we're gonna talk about today. Secondly, people are taking this blog to mean that the GPU will boost until it hits 110 degrees Celsius junction temperature, which is factually inaccurate. It will in some scenarios, but not always. If that were the case, the Sapphire Pulse card that we just reviewed, which operated about an 87 degree junction temperature under a heavy load, steady state, would boost until it hits 110 also. And so it would read 110, not 87. And also the frequency would be absurd, like plus 200 megahertz or something like that. The quote from AMD that we're concerned about for number two here is the following. Radeon RX 5700 series GPUs will continue to opportunistically and aggressively ramp clocks until any one of the many available sensors hits the hot spot or the junction temperature of 110 degrees Celsius. That's the quote. In reality, it does not simply boost until hitting 110. Again, if that were the case, the Sapphire card would be at 110. Every card would be at 110, and also it would mean that we could put the card under LN2 and basically have infinity for our frequency. So uh, that is perhaps bad wording by AMD here, whereas the previous quote, about 110 being expected is, sounds a bit more defensive. So we think that's bad wording. Uh, the third issue we had was people are now whitewashing good cooler designs by partners because of this AMD blog post. So just because the silicon can handle something doesn't mean it should run at that temperature. This minimizes the good work that partners have done. It uh, makes the blower cooler seem more acceptable than it is, sort of gaslighting people. And it also means that a lot of people will be on forums for years responding to others with high thermals saying that, oh, 110 degrees is expected. So this will spread misinformation, whether AMD intended it or not, years down the line, as people's cards fill with dust or the thermal paste needs to be replaced or whatever, the stock pad on it, stuff like that, 110 degrees is expected will be the quote that's parroted uh, ad infinitum as people have issues. So. That's a, that's a concern too. And then the final point of concern we have before getting into the details is point number four, which is media reports parroting this information as 110C is normal. So in the 
unending need to obviously differentiate reporting from other outlets and from the source story and the fine synonyms and things like that. 110C is normal has become the new kind of headline for this or the discussion point in online forums, which is false when simplified to that degree. 110C is fine, might be okay to say, for the silicon, but it's a bit different when we look at it at a wider scale. So again, a card that costs $10 more in MSRP than the reference design is at about 87 degrees Celsius junction temperature when at 40 dBA. Whereas the reference blower was hitting 110 at this noise level, or 97 at 51 dBA noise level at, at 20 inches measured away. And it's not normal for Navi to hit that temperature. And it's the job of the, the media to obviously question first party posts. So those are the four concerns we had with this, this story. Not just the Andy blog post, but how the story has developed on Reddit and on forums online. To be very clear here, we're not saying that 110 degrees Celsius is bad for the silicon. That's definitely not what we're saying. AMD seems to think it's fine, and it probably is, as far as the silicon is concerned. But what we are saying is that 110 degrees Celsius indicates an extremely bad cooler design or something else wrong in the system. Maybe the case it has an issue. So there's no need to settle for and defend bad cooler designs or high thermals as a result of cooling solutions, whether that's the case or the card, when the market is burgeoning with good cooling solutions. We, we shouldn't be minimizing those just because the silicon can handle it. That is flawed. We explained junction temperature previously. If you don't know what it is, back when we reviewed the Radeon 7 card, we talked through all of this back in February. So this isn't new. It's the same thing. And actually, we'll just cue a clip from that review to emphasize how not new this is. Junction temperature is new to Radeon settings and is effectively the GPU-Z hotspot temperature. AMD uses its network of 64 thermal sensors across the chip to find the hottest spots, then clocks according to the one hotspot. This is as opposed to guessing based on an edge temperature, which is what the traditional GPU temperature is, in quotes, and we'll plot that line now. GPU temperature is measured at the edge of the die. It's an edge temp, and it's cooler than the center of the die, which is where junction will pull data. Junction temperature has a TJ max of 110 degrees stock and 120 when overclock settings are applied, assuming any of them worked. More on that later. Junction temperature is the most important now, as it will dictate boosting headroom for that second line we drew that's the stock gpu temperature at about 80 degrees celsius with our fixed fan rpm that's the one you're traditionally exposed to but junction is what's actually important here these days it's again it's uh, the hotter of the temperatures hotspot temperatures first started servicing with vega it was called hotspot temperature in gpu z one of the most common email questions we got was what is that what's hotspot temperature in vega and we even spoke with gpu z's developers back when this was a brand new thing and they weren't 100 clear on it tech power up makes gpu z and the, uh, specifically Wizard from Tech Power, the reason they weren't 100% clear on it was because AMD wasn't 100% clear on what it meant. So there were a lot of theories out there, but ultimately we learned that hotspot temperature became junction temperature, or the hottest single point on the die across the multiple sensors on the die, not to be confused with edge temperature, which is what's typically reported and what is currently reported by, for example, NVIDIA. But regardless of which temperature is reported, a bad cooler is going to have a high temperature, whether that's edge or junction in the comparative versus other coolers. Junction temperature is ultimately a good thing to expose, and it's a good thing to base your clocks off of. Because with edge temperatures, you really, you have this big area of ambiguity of what the real hottest point of the die is. And so in being conservative to make sure the chip doesn't kill itself, you do have to look at the edge temperature and then factor in some headroom of, well, we know that the delta between the edge and the hottest point might be something like, let's say 30 degrees. And so we have to conservatively boost based upon that assumed delta. So it's good to have junction temperature for this reason, because you eliminate that guesswork as the GPU developer in determining what frequency should be hit. So we think this is a good thing that AMD's exposed it. Unfortunately, AMD's explanation of junction temperature has thus far been pretty poor. And the result is a lot of people online confused about how boosting works to the point where they're quoting AMD's article and actually, it's just kind of wrong when, when jumping to the conclusions people are jumping to, as we discussed earlier. So none of this is new, but unfortunately, this post has prompted people to begin a, uh, defending AMD by guilt tripping anyone who says that 110 degrees is simply too high. So 
the claim now is that AMD is only being punished for exposing its junction temperature because people are saying it's too hot. And they wouldn't say it's too hot if it's edge temperature exposed. That uh, is probably false, first of all, although we can't obviously ever prove that because the world didn't take that timeline. But separately, parroting that the silicon can handle it and AMD is now being punished is about as manipulative as it gets. Because now what's going to happen is AMD, it's comprised of people, and we know most of the ones who, uh, who post the public topics on the blog, AMD is going to look at this response. It's going to look at the people defending them, guilt tripping others, saying that uh, 110 isn't too high. You're only saying that because junction temperature is exposed. You're punishing AMD. And in the future, that number might go away. And it's going to turn around and be people saying, well, it went away because everyone said 110 is too hot. That's not why the temperature is perceived as too hot. It's not because of the junction temperature. It's not because it's a new temperature. It's because it's too hot. The silicon can handle it. It's not too hot for the silicon. But if we look at good coolers, again, the Sapphire one, it's clear that a cooler can easily bring Navi down under 100 degrees Celsius junction temperature. We're at 84 on that thing, at 40 dBA. That's really good, so kudos to Sapphire. But the point is that uh, 110, when considering coolers, is in fact too high for the cooler to allow the GPU to operate because the GPU does not boost to 110 for a higher frequency. It doesn't, it doesn't have a temperature target of always run at 110 and adjust frequency accordingly. It does that to an extent, but then it hits other limitations. So running at 110 degrees Celsius, it's not a fault of the GPU. It's a fault of a bad cooler. And to this end, an Intel CPU might have a TJ Maxx of 95 degrees Celsius. So it's OK for the CPU silicon to run that hot. But it's far from expected or normal. It's a poor phrasing on AMD's part there. The silicon could handle, say, 94 degrees on this Intel chip. And running at such a temperature is bordering on thermal throttling. It is clearly inefficient, and it's indicative of a bad cooler choice by the user or just a bad cooler design, if not. It's acceptable, similarly, for NVIDIA Pascal to run at 84 degrees Celsius for its presented temperature, which would be edge temperature. It's acceptable for Touring to run at 87 degrees. And a lot of MOSFETs can do 125 degrees. Some inductors can do 150 degrees Celsius. But at these temperatures, Pascal and Touring begin to throttle pretty hard, actually. Or the uh, MOSFETs, you might start getting derating. The inductors are kind of running on the edge of thermal runaway, if not already in a thermal runaway scenario. So just because the silicon and the copper wires can handle running at these temperatures does not mean that it's OK, expected, or normal to run at these temperatures. You are left with no thermal headroom for incidents within the case, like maybe another component spinning up and increasing case ambient. You are left with a louder cooling solution as a result of running so hot, because now the fans have to work harder to prevent that very, very close one degree away thermal throttle in these examples. And uh, MOSFETs, they derate. But, and also, there's less headroom to accommodate, again, hotter cases. Uh, on the market, of which there are many. So we shouldn't be settling for the highest permissible temperature of the silicon, as this excuses terrible cooler designs that allow the parts to operate that hot to begin with. It also minimizes the, the good work that partners do to make efficient, well-designed coolers that keep the temperatures well below these marks. So it also means that we're operating inefficiently. At 110 degrees, and these clocks do start dropping. We showed this in our review with frequency over time, where you see it start to bounce off of that 110 degree border and drop the clocks to try and bring the temperature back down. So this is obviously an undesirable behavior, but one which protects the GPU. It's undesirable because you're dropping clocks, so performance will get worse. On a CPU, we also see about a 4% reduction in power waste through power leakage for every 10 degrees Celsius reduced off of the core. And this means that there's, on a GPU, following the same logic, although the numbers would be different, on a GPU there would be more power budget out of the vBIOS power limit to a lot to boosting the frequency. And it's also just operating more efficiently with less power waste. 
The next section is to break down what AMD said versus what AMD probably meant. So what AMD said, quote, Radeon RX 5700 GPUs will continue to opportunistically and aggressively ramp clocks until any one of the many available sensors hits the hotspot or junction temperature of 110 degrees Celsius. What they meant, we think, GPU boost is active when the card is running under 110 degrees Celsius, not that the GPU will intentionally clock up until it hits 110 degrees Celsius. A lot of people in the Reddit thread seemed to take AMD's wording as meaning that GPU boosts until it hits 110, but this is easily shown to be false. Navi boosts until it hits thermal, power, silicon fitness, or voltage limits, just like every other GPU on the market. If it's not hitting thermal limits, it's probably hitting power allowance limits in vBIOS. What they say, operating at up to 110 degrees Celsius junction temperature during typical gaming usage is expected and within spec. What we think they mean, anything at or below 110 degrees Celsius is technically within spec and should allow for normal functionality. Not that the GPU is actually expected to hit 110 degrees Celsius during gaming. This is weaseling out of a scenario that would be bad by saying the silicon can handle it. And obviously, again, it's not expected because we didn't really see that happening, but that's beside the point. Separately, as the GPU approaches 110, it will lose the ability to clock higher, it will run louder, and it will lose more power to leakage. So this isn't really a defensible position to begin with, despite being, quote, within spec. What they say, quote, completely out of the box, the GPUs will automatically and opportunistically utilize all available electrical, acoustic, and thermal headroom in real time to ramp clock speed and deliver improved performance. What we think they mean, 5700s work the same way as every other GPU. They have voltage, temperature limits, and a fan curve, and they boost within those parameters. Acoustic headroom is based upon a fan curve probably defined in an anechoic chamber somewhere. It's not like the cards have mics in them yet. This video is only a thing because AMD made another post about it. And again, parts of it are just probably poorly worded. Parts of it look a bit defensive. And it's kind of weird that AMD is acting like 110 degrees is, quote, expected during gaming workloads, considering that, one, most of the cards that will ever sell will be partner models, and it is absolutely not expected for them to hit that kind of temperature during just gaming. Two, the reference blower in our testing won't even hit temperature levels that high unless you're using probably a terrible case and you have a higher ambient than ours. We tested at 21 degrees Celsius in an open bench. So if you throw it into something like, let's say a BitPhoenix Enso and you're at, that's probably enough actually, then yes, 110 would be expected. But is that really because of the card at that point? That's because of the case. So it's a bit weird to step outside of the bounds of what AMD does and say it's expected because it's not. It's, it's, I mean, it's just not. The card isn't expected to run that hot. Separately, this is also a post or a video because we saw people in the community taking bits and pieces of that article and one saying this is amazing. Thank you for providing this information, even though it's old, but cool that AMD provided some of it, even though it's disguised in TMs and marketing at the beginning. And two, they're taking the quotes Again, Reddit's a great example. And saying, well, all the GPUs are supposed to boost until 110 degrees. And so that's normal. But that's not what AMD meant. It's what AMD implied. So you can't really blame the users. But that's not how it works. That is absolutely boost. Again, we could put the card under that. And it would have infinite frequency if that were the case. Uh, or you could put, the, realistically, you put the card on, let's say there's no power, no other parameters at all except temperature. Let's say there's no stability question. Frequency goes up until temperature hits 110C. If that's how it worked, you put under LN2, it will eventually hit 110C. But the power will be absurd, like thousands of watts. So obviously what's happening is it boosts until it hits thermal, then power, and then probably silicon fitness or uh, VF parameters. So that's, that's how it works. And the phrase in an AMD's post was poor because you end up with the comments that we got online on various forum threads. Most of the people do seem to understand the scenario here, the situation here, people being consumers. We just, we really wanted to clarify this because the biggest problem that I personally had with this was seeing people, especially in media, saying 110C is fine. So that's like saying 
on an Intel CPU, again, 94C is fine for a 9900K, right? I mean, it is. The silicon can do it. Or perhaps you say uh, 125C is fine for a MOSFET. 87C is fine for a Turing GPU. So it's, it's really not. Like the silicon, yes, it's fine. It will run. It will not die at that temperature. But you could have so much better. And it's not like you have to get open loop expensive water cooling to do it. So it's not really fine when you look at the whole picture of the gaming PC or workstation PC. It's only fine insofar as the silicon's fitness and ability to tolerate that temperature. And that is a terrible metric upon which to base your PC component purchasing choices, especially with regard to cooling in cases, because it does have consequences and we've gone through those in this video. And a final note here, this isn't about bashing on the AMD reference cooler. It's about making sure people understand that that 110 number isn't really expected. So if you do see that, especially if you have a partner card or if you have just maybe a case that's questionable, make sure you pay attention to it. Don't just gloss over it because AMD said it's okay for the silicon to run at that. This is about making sure people actually look into the, the temperatures their parts are running at and make sure everything's working properly so you don't end up running the GPU at TJ Maxx, potentially damaging components or just losing performance because maybe the cooler needs to be RMA'd from your board partner or maybe the case is completely suffocated. So just to be clear, there's a very big difference between silicon can handle it and cooler is shit. So that's the video. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more. Go to store.gamersnexus.net if you would like to support us by buying things like this shirt, which actually by the time this video goes up, we might be almost out of stock. Uh, or you can go and pick up the mod mat, the toolkit for GPU teardowns, things like that. Patreon.com slash gamersnexus. Otherwise, thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time.